What's up guys? Iceman here. So in this video, I'm going to talk about mercenaries in Diablo 2 Resurrected. The most common mercenary that you're going to see seasoned players use are the Act 2 mercenaries. This is partly due to the fact that they are able to have paladin auras and you can choose what type of mercenary you want and each mercenary starts off with just one aura. The only way to get them to have other auras is by certain pieces of gear that allow any player to have a specific aura that that piece of gear has to offer. There aren't too many examples of these types of gear, but one would be Last Wish. Another would be the Harmony Bow that you can put on an Act 1 mercenary that gives them the Vigor Aura. And most notably, perhaps, would be Infinity, the Burmal Burist Polearm Rune Word that gives the Conviction Aura that can break immunities throughout the game, primarily Lightning Immunes. However, Infinity, the aura that it offers, a Conviction Level 12 Aura, doesn't break all the immunities in the game, not even all the Lightning Immunities, but it breaks a lot of them, so you'll be killing a lot more monsters than what you were able to before with the same element, with using Infinity compared to not. So Infinity is godly, and I hope to get one one day for China, my assassin character. Because right now her mercenary sucks. Let me show you his gear. This is a very common helm to use on a mercenary. This is uh, almost the best piece of gear that I've found so far outside of my SOJ and Ariats, which I'm going to identify in just a moment here. I just found it from Eldritch a few minutes ago. Now, Tal Mask fell from Pindleskin, all right? And I was running him constantly. This is pretty much the best item that I found from him so far, but this is just a good mercenary helmet all around. Primarily because it gives 10 life leech always, and you really want life leech on your mercenary. That's how they survive. It gives 15 all res, and it gives 60 life. So all three of those attributes are very desirable to have on a mercenary. Now he uses a shitty weapon. Didn't even put anything in there. I just don't have anything for him to use, all right? So I'm probably gonna make if LF if only I could find a damn L rune. Very shitty armor as well, all right? But this video isn't about my mercenary. Let me check this out. Let's identify these areas. Shit. Uh, pretty low defense. I believe it ranges from 150% to 200%. But nonetheless, it's a hog of a helm, because I want to make a Frenzy Barbarian soon. So, from Cassia, you can hire a rogue mercenary. They're based on the rogue character in Diablo 1. Which I hope to play that game soon, the Beelzebub mod. Stay tuned for videos on that. That shit is fun. Now, these mercenaries in LOD Classic, or D2R rather, as it is right now, are rarely ever used. Because, like I said before, the Act 2 mercenaries are generally the most desirable because they have the auras that they spawn with. Now, there are a few examples where you might want to have an Act 1 mercenary. Okay? One is if you're an Amazon who wants to wield Windforce Bow. There are some benefits of using Windforce over Faith. It has higher damage potential and it has knockback on it. And you just straight up get style points. It's a classic Diablo 1 item. It's, it's godly. And it gets better with age like wine, with the max damage based on character level. So things like that. All right, Windforce is... you get style points for using Windforce. Now the problem is, Windforce isn't nearly as fast as Faith. So your overall DPS is really going to take a hit using Windforce. Now one way to compensate with that is by putting a Faith Bow on your Act 1 Mercenary. Now, keep in mind, the Act 1 mercenaries can't weld Amazon bows. They have to weld regular type bows that any character can use. So the Shadow Bow is one example of what's very common. The Great Bow is also very common, as well as the Diamond Bow. And that might be it, but I think there are a few others. So most commonly, the Great Bow, the Shadow Bow, or the Diamond Bow. You make a faith in that, and then your mercenary will have fanaticism because faith has the fanaticism aura. So it's going to give your Amazon higher IAS, and she's going to be able to attack fast as fuck, to put it plainly. So it's going to be very nice. It's going to be quite nice. You're going to be using Windforce. You're going to have a very expensive item on your mercenary. So all your neighbors 
are going to envy you. And that's going to be Hawk, all right? So basically, these mercenaries kind of suck. They all cast Inner Sight randomly, and they, uh, what the hell? They all have Fire Arrow. Okay, they all have Fire Arrow. And I think it might uh, partly depend on the difficulty, because this is Hell difficulty. So we could check maybe and see if it's any different in Normal or Nightmare. Now I'm going to go to Act 2 and showcase some of those mercenaries. So it's important to note that there are four different mercenaries that you can hire in Diablo 2 in terms of their class or whatever. All right. Now, of course, they'll vary with skills, but Act 4 does not offer a mercenary. So don't let that confuse you. Act 5, however, does. Act 3 does. Act 2 does. Act 1 does. And here's the example of the Act 2 mercenaries. Now, you can hire these guys whenever you want. To hire the Act 1 mercenaries, the rogues, you have to kill Blood Raven first as quest. And you also have to rescue the barbarians in Act 5, as I believe is the second quest, uh, in order to hire the barbarian mercenary there. So here we have the Act 2 Hell mercenaries. So they all have jab, which is a very effective skill to have on your mercenary. Now, mercenaries are limited with gear types that they can use. Uh, the example with the Act 2 is they can use either pull arms or spears. So you're limited to those two item types in terms of what you can choose for this guy. And of course, the Act 1 mercenaries can only use bows. They can't use crossbows in D2R. And the Act 3 mercenaries can use one-handed swords, and you can also put a shield on them. So you could really have a hog build with Last Wish and Phoenix Shield and just, just make them badass. Not that it's going to be the most practical build, but you'll just get crazy style points for something like that. Or uh, even Medusa's Gaze for the lower resist on hit. So that could be quite effective, really, but you got to get a strength up there. So you got to put in Indariel's Visage on that mofo. And the Act 5 mercenaries can only wield swords. So they can wield either one-handed or two-handed swords, and they can't dual wield, even though the Barbarian in-game can dual wield. So you're limited to that. Now, Lawbringer is a nice item to have on an Act 5 Barbarian, because it casts Decrepify, which is a crazy overpowered skill in Diablo 2. You can actually break physical immunes with that skill. And it also, uh, so it just, it, it really cuts in to the enemy's physical resistances. So if you have like a Frenzy Barbarian, it might be something you want to try. Have Decrepify casting on your Act 5 Mercenary. But of course, there's the Reaper's Toll that has a 33% chance of casting Decrepify on Striking, which is very common to have on the Act 2 Mercenaries. So you can have the Reaper's Toll on the Act 2 Mercenary along with the Might Aura, so you're going to get enhanced damage. But check this out. Let's see what these guys roll. So in Hell Mode, you'll have to select between Defiance, which in some cases you'll want to try this out, but most of the time you want the other ones. Here's Blessed Aim. So say that you're an Amazon who's really lacking on chance to hit. You're trying to get through Hell Mode you might want to have a Blessed Aim Mercenary because then your overall DPS will go up and you might actually be doing more damage per second with Blessed Aim over Might if your attack rating sucks ass. So it's really something you might want to consider. And then Prayer. Now, Prayer is in an aura that I don't think is very commonly chosen. However, I really like going Prayer Initially, my mercenary is still a prayer mercenary, I believe. I just like having some heals from the beginning. So when I get to Act 2, I often hire a prayer mercenary. And it's partly also due to the fact that my mercenary often doesn't have any life leech when I get to Act 2 normal mode. And to compensate for that, I'll choose prayer. So at least he can heal himself a little bit and hopefully not die. And of course, the aura also goes on to your character. See, so you watch this. Yeah, it should go around my character's feet. Here, I'll just, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll step outside of town. Should follow my character, and it has a certain radius about it. And these uh, do level up as the mercenary levels up. Looks like he has a level 22 jab and a level 16 prayer. 
Now, sometimes they don't always start the aura right away. So they'll have to start hitting enemies in order for their aura to activate. So it might be something you want to do as soon as you enter a new game is just let your mercenary kill shit. And there you have it. Uh, he already cast his aura. So as you can see, it's around her feet and it has a certain radius about it. 30 yards. Holy shit. So a lot of radius. And it looks like uh, it's still gone. It's still on my character. Let's see if I can get away from it. Holy shit. Yeah, auras and or, uh, yards in Diablo 2 are, are quite vast. But okay. Back to the mercenaries. Mine's probably going to die. He's just... He's dead. He's... He's not uh, very effective at all. So I'm going to head to Act 5. So Qualkek, if that's how you say, let me know in the comments below. Once you complete the Rescue the Barbarians quest, you can hire Barbarian mercenaries. But as mentioned, they don't spawn with any auras. They do decent amounts of damage. I think they have the Bash skill, so they can stun enemies temporarily. But other than that, the only benefit is really, do you want to have your mercenary that's fighting melee wield a sword? If for any reason you do, say that early on you find a high-end sword that just is, packs a ton of damage, then you might want to get a barbarian mercenary until you can find decent equipment for an Act 2 mercenary. Now, there are other mercenaries. Well, there's one more left. It's the Act 3 mercenary. And he's kind of a little bitch, but I'm going to go show you him anyway. I have been farming Anya, so you can sometimes find really good items. Uh, someone may mention in the comments below on a previous video of mine that they spent about two hours farming Anya and they finally attained a pair of gloves that gave 20 increased attack speed and plus three to javelin and spear skills for the Amazon, which can be quite valuable. I'm pretty sure those are worth about a high rune, so if you want to spend a lot of time farming Anya, you know, you can you can potentially get some currency from doing that. Now you want to be a certain level, and I don't know if 80 is even adequate. That's the level my character is. And I've also been farming Pendle Skin, so check this out. No. Been running over here, casting Cloak of Shadows, casting Light Sentry, casting some Death... Oh! Oh, hell yeah! These are pretty good. Thunderstrokes. You know, identify that shit. Oh! Four! Wait, do they always get four? In D2R? I, I, th I think they range from two to four. Yeah, th and so these are uh, four skillers. And uh, kind of low uh, enhanced damage, but that's not a big deal at all. So yeah, I, I might make a Javazan. I was thinking about it. Hell yeah. Hog Javelins right here. Alright, I'm going to show you the Act 3 Mercenaries. One thing I like about Diablo 2 Resurrected is just what they did with Act 3. Because I always liked jungle-like environments, just in video games and all that. I was a big fan of Jurassic Park when I was a kid, right? So when I started playing Diablo 2, I was like, whoa, Act 3 is like a jungle. And uh, But of course, it was pretty bland in vanilla. But check it out. They just made the visuals a lot more appealing, I think, in Act 3. In fact, here's the uh, Act 3 mercenary. Here's one of them walking around. I think they're called Iron Wolves. Now, they were a great concept and a good idea, but the problem is they just, they don't do very well at all. So there definitely could be some balancing done. And I'm hoping that Diablo 2 Resurrected offers a sort of resurrected ladder reset option alongside of the classic ladder reset option, where the resurrected ladder reset option could have a lot of enhancements, changes, balances, you know, things like that added to it. Itemization, maybe even slamming and corrupting items, like in Project Diablo 2, or Path of Diablo, or Path of Exile, rather, where I think that concept was inspired from. But things like that, I would love to see that implemented in Diablo 2 Resurrected. So in that sort of a setting, you know, these mercenaries probably would be useful, because the truth is, in Project Diablo 2 right now, they actually are kind of useful, because they do a lot more damage. And they spawn with, they, they cast uh, viable skills even in uh, Project Diablo 2. And they also spawn with auras. So they just decided to let all the mercenaries spawn with different types of auras. So depending on what aura you wanted would depend on what mercenary you wanted. But that's just not the case in D2R. It's just the only ones that spawn with auras are the F2 mercenaries. Hello there. You must be a great but you hire them from Ashira. Okay. 
And so they cast Glacial Spike, they have Frozen Armor, and they cast uh, Ice Blast. Now there's also Lightning ones. But look at the shitty damage. 8 to 10. 8 to 10 Charge Bolt. 1 to 312. 274 uh, Fireball. It's just for a level 79 character. Just It's just very shitty. All right. So they're going to be casting the Fireball. They're going to be casting, you know, the, the Glacial Spike one can freeze enemies for a moment. So that's kind of nice. You could experiment with them if you want. Uh, maybe in normal mode, they're not too bad. But really, when it comes to end game, you know, they, they kind of suck and they just they lag way behind the other mercenaries, specifically the Act 2 mercenaries. I mean, basically, all the mercenaries suck except for the Act 2 mercenaries, unless if you're on a niche build situation like the few that I've mentioned. But that's the case with the Act 3 mercenaries. Now, the gear that you want on, say, the Act 2 mercenary is what most of us use kind of depends on your build all right it, it very much depends on your build but a common helm see tell helm is a beginner's helm all right you don't want anything much less than this crown of thieves is decent you want something with life leech generally unless if your uh, weapon has a ton of life leech if you're using the reaper's toll on your act 2 mercenary that has a lot of life leech so you can actually then choose a helm that doesn't have any life leash. You can take Rock Stopper, for example, because it has a ton of resists on it. It has 10% damage reduction, and it has 30% faster hit recovery. Just very nice stats for any mercenary. But in many cases, you're going to want to have life leech on the helm. I've seen some mercenaries that have Chains of Honor armor on them. Uh, ethereal body armor and it gives life leech so that's an outlet as well to avoid having it on the helm or the weapon but chains of honor is expensive as fuck and your mercenary isn't really going to benefit so much from the skills they do benefit some the skills from the gear should add to the skills that your mercenary uses but how beneficial is that to you you know when you have to compare that to other armors that might be better overall is up to you Gladiator's Bane is a very popular option. Durial Shell is a very popular option. I really like Gladiator's Bane on my mercenaries because it gives fast rate recovery, cannot be frozen, poison length reduction, and uh, a lot of PDR and MDR. So it's a very nice armor, and I think it's often overlooked. You could socket it and put an Umrun in it, an ethereal one, for example. It would be pretty good. But most notably... Your Act 2 mercenary is going to be wearing a treachery armor, which uh, is ex as expensive as a Lem rune. 45 increased attack speed. The Fade proc, where his damage reduction is going to... Oh! Oh, it's my dog. Lif, uh, on my Discord. Um, yeah, thank you for your help, Lif. He's actually one of the, uh, the moderators there. I haven't seen him in game yet. 73 sorcerers, not bad. So I'm going to show you some of these items that I'm mentioning, all right? I'll be right back. All right, so the resolution sucks right here, but I'm going to showcase this item anyway. This is Leviathan, a very desirable item in Diablo 2 for a mercenary. It's, it's, a, it's a more affordable item for your mercenary, and the reason these are decent is because, well, they have a lot of defense, and primarily because of the damage reduction. It gives a, up to a 25% damage reduction, and damage reduction is very important for a mercenary, all right? Rockstopper, the helm that I mentioned, just check that shit out. Uh, all beneficial. I don't, I can't recall if they actually benefit from vitality or not. Uh, I don't, I don't know if they do even though they should, but I'm not sure if they benefit from vitality. But nonetheless, it's a very nice item uh, for a mercenary. Faster recovery, a lot of resists, and some damage reduction. So if you can get Life Leech elsewhere, Rock Stopper is a very cheap option for a mercenary as a helmet. This is probably my favorite uh, mercenary helm, and these of course are all better if you can find them ethereal, because Gear doesn't lose durability or break on your mercenaries. So very important to keep in mind. So it's common to make rune words for mercenaries in ethereal armors, like an ethereal uh, fortitude, for example. It can roll a lot of defense. Of course, in D2R, 
You can no longer e-bug armors in the Haradra cube, which I think really sucks, because that really added to the itemization and the item search in the game. And it wasn't crazy overpowered, it was just cool and collectible to have these armors that had a ton of defense on them, because it would give an additional 50% armor on an ethereal base if you cube socket them. But they took that away, so hopefully they'll bring that back. So give me a hell yeah in the comments below if you guys want to see e-bugging armors brought back in Diablo 2 Resurrected. But Vamp Gaze, it looks cool, has up to 20% damage reduction, very nice mod for Mercenary. Some magic damage reduction, very nice and often overlooked. Some life leech and even some cold damage. So your Mercenary just, they just love all that shit. Reaper's Toll, probably uh, one of my favorite mercenary items. It's just, and if you can find this ethereal, it's very beneficial. And you could socket it, put a shell rune in it or something. Decrepify, just very overpowered. Like I said, if you're a Frenzy Barbarian or a Whirlwind Barbarian or a Boson or a Zealer, you know, just all sorts of uh, Fury Droid, all sorts of crazy physical melee builds, or ranged for that matter, Decrepify is great to have around. You're going to break a lot of physical immunes and you're going to pierce their physical resistance nonetheless anyway. So it's very beneficial. You're going to kill shit so much faster. So this is a great uh, this is a great item unique to have on your mercenary. It has a lot of damage, has deadly strike, and a ton of life leech. And these are just some examples. Fortitude is probably uh, one of the most common, desirable mercenary armors in the game. Gives them chilling armor, ton of armor, a uh, ton of damage, base life, which is very nice, replenish life, uh, decent resistances. So this armor is just an absolute hog, but it's quite expensive. Low room. This is uh, the item that you want to break immunes, primarily if you're a lightning character. So often you'll see Trap Assassins, most desiring Infinity, along with Javazans and Lightning Sorceresses. Probably the three primary classes that just love this fucking rune word. Of course, there are many other classes and builds that prefer this, but those are probably the, the three most notable. So you can run Chaos Sanctuary, you can run Bell, and you can break most of the Light Immunes. So, yeah, Infinity is a game changer, and I really love that about Diablo 2 and its itemization. It's quite a chase, you know, like, it's it's damn hard to get a Burr rune, let alone uh, two Burr runes. So, yeah, Infinity, it, it, it makes for a great chase, and that's something that Diablo 3 lacked, is how you have to work very hard to get these game-changing items. Because then all of a sudden, when you finally attain Infinity, it's so rewarding because then you can start running other areas with your character that you used to not be able to run. And it really sets you apart from everyone else. It just shows your power, you know what I mean? And that's something that Diablo 3 lacked entirely. I mean, fuck it, Diablo 3 didn't even have monsters that were immune to anything. Just all the damage was the same, nobody gave a shit. Poison, coal, lightning, fire, just all killed the enemies, it didn't even matter. See, and that's part of the reason why I think it's important to have immunities brought back for Diablo 4. Because that's really what the fucking game is, right? You gotta have a challenge. You gotta have things that set you apart from others. You gotta be ingenuitive and creative. You gotta have ways around killing immunes and things like that. It all adds to the experience. And basically the, the power hierarchy, which must be partly what's enthralling about playing these fucking games. So it's important to have immunities being brought back to Diablo 4. You know, make damage matter. Make the lightning damage matter. Make the poison damage matter. Make them be distinct, because they're not distinct when they all just kill the fucking enemy anyway. And it's just a different fucking color, whatever you're emitting out of your weapon. You know, that that's bullshit. And that's what they did in Diablo 3. So, give me a hell yeah, if you guys are with me on that, in the comments below. Peace be with you. So, almost done here. Dara's Visage. Uh, there are some cases where you need more strength on your mercenary to wield like a, a high-end pole arm or some sort of item type, like a great pole axe or some shit that just has a, or a Colossus Vulge, for example, has a ton of strength requirement. So if he's like not like 95 or some shit, you're not going to be able to have that equipped to him if you don't have added strength on your mercenary. A little less than that, probably 90, probably 88, something like that, but... 
Nonetheless, this is a great helm for your mercenary. It's often socketed with a RAL rune to compensate for its uh, how you actually lose some fire res wearing this helm. But you have a ton of poison res, a ton of max poison res, so very nice. Your mercenary is uh, highly unlikely to die from poison, poison damage, or, or even get fucked by it much at all. Two to all skills, 20 increased attack speed, and a ton of life leech and strength. So this helm is an absolute hog for mercenaries. Like I said, in general, I kind of prefer vamp gaze over it, but there actually are situations where uh, Andy's massage is great. Like if you're running errors, a lot of poison. Uh, like on your way collecting maybe torches or something, or, uh, or organs rather. Insight. Uh, probably the first rune word we generally make for our mercenaries. It's just very common for them. You want to make it in an ethereal item base. It can be made in any four socketed pull arm, and your Act 2 mercenary can wield it. Ranges from a 12 to 17 meditation aura. So if you're a sorceress, teleporting around, zipping around, you might want to have an insight. And I kind of want an insight, but I don't even have a good 40s pole. I have uh, this one right here, just a pole axe. And I want one with more damage. It's just a normal mode pole axe. These can't roll four. These can at max roll three. Otherwise, that would have been a great find. But yeah, that's like the best I have of these two. This one attacks a little faster, I believe. That's another thing. You can go online, uh, Diablo 2 calculators, and uh, increase attack speed calculators, and see the breakpoints that your mercenary has with specific item types. Like these, or their uh, elite alternative, which is the Giant Thresher, have a very fast attack speed for a mercenary. And these are slower. And these are slower as well. Uh, the Pull Axe, or the Cryptic Axe elite version. So you gotta factor in all that shit, because the faster he is attacking, the more he's going to proc whatever abilities he has, and perhaps more importantly, the more he's going to life leech. And you want that motherfucker to life leech, because that's how he going to survive, all right? Oh, shit, I had this up the whole time. Y'all, y'all couldn't see that. It's my bad, y'all couldn't see what I was pointing at. You know, I was pointing at this, or the uh, cryptic axe, or this piece of shit that uh, can only roll three sockets max, otherwise it would have been a great find. Or uh, this, the Giant Thresher uh, Elite version, which attacks very fast. It's very nice. It has high requirements, though. But yeah, if you guys will like the damn video, hit the thumbs up button, become a patron if you want, or you can buy Ice Toted Coffee. Links in the description below. And for those of you who support me, May the Creator bless you and keep you. May your finances be blessed. And may you have many wives. Peace be with you.